What's happening? Jehu in the house. No, Ron in the house. There we go. Welcome to my podcast. This is episode two. The first one was kind of a test, but you know, it was a full on, it was here in house this time around. We're doing the Zoom thing because we're mid, mid chaos of this coronavirus, right? So you now are, in it. for those of you who don't know, this is Ron, my friend. We've, we've known each other for how long? I years. think it's got to be like four, five, four or five years now. Four or five years. I met him in New York while I was doing my uh, videos. He hit me up. And you're in New York right now, right? You're in New Jersey? Is that where you are right yeah, now? Yeah. So, so I'm in New Jersey, and uh, it, I'm just 15 minutes from the George Washington Bridge. Okay. And yeah. that's and the George Washington Bridge is one that, that crosses over into Manhattan. Yeah, so yeah, it's kind of like North Jersey, and it's a, it's a main crossing. Okay. The next one down would be Lincoln Tunnel, and then after oh, that okay. is the... Um, uh, I always forget uh, Hudson. What is it? No, Lincoln. Oh, really? Then I don't even remember. <laughs> I hey, haven't been there in a while. So, so you haven't been going to the city? No, I haven't been to the city yeah. in a while. <laughs> so it's, it's a ghost like town over there. Center. It's scary over there, yeah, man. Yeah, it's like uh, World War Z. No, what is it? Uh, I am legend status, Dude, right? <laughs> it's, let me tell you. I've never seen it like this ever. Uh, if you walk around the neighborhood uh, after 8 p.m., oh my God, it's like it's four in the morning on a Sunday. It's just it's empty. nothing. I've seen pictures. People are taking pictures of downtown. It's just empty. Like there's nothing, no life happening. Yeah. It's crazy, yeah, huh? It, it, it's like the Twilight Zone. It's I call it the mass meditation. Everybody's like home thinking about things. Right. <laughs> no one's doing anything. No one's it's crazy. It. Everybody's working on their projects. Yeah, luckily, yeah. I mean, some people are lucky. I, you know, I got a little workshop here, and you have a workshop. Your workshop is amazing. Yeah. How's that going? It's a lot of work. I'm like, I can't, th I can't, you know, I can't uh, wait to finish it so I can actually do some projects. Literally, my bus is running around with no air uh, air shocks. They don't work, so it's hidden everywhere. And I'm refusing to climb down on the floor, right? To to because I have a lift that I'm installing, and I'm like, I'm not touching my my bus until I can throw it on the lift. <laughs> so I'm driving around hitting everywhere. <laughs> it sucks. Uh, now you're spoiled. Yeah. Now you're spoiled. You're like, oh, I I, I only want to look at my hair is all messed up. There you go. That's better. Look at that. I'm getting uh, better, man. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> You're spoiled. You got a lift. I got a lift. I only have a scissor lift at my high school shop. A scissor lift? Oh yeah, the ones on the metal. Yeah, yeah. I no, I I was like, you can't put a battery. We're using one of those, right? Oh yes. So you That's need true. you need the ones from the side so that the center is open. So that and by the way, those yeah. of you don't know what I'm talking about. I I have planned to convert electric cars, right? And so you have to install batteries, and usually the best place to put them is underneath in the center. And so, if you have a lift that is lifting the car from the center, then you can't really do that. So, so yeah, um, I think what you're doing is really innovative because a lot of people just put the batteries wherever, but this is different. You're putting the batteries in the floor, which the floor. is the best spot for the weight distribution. Yeah, not messing around here. Not messing around. I'm just gonna close the door here. Oh, they're making noise back there. Yes. Yeah, it looks like it's a it's a it's a lovely day over in Jersey. Is it pretty warm? Say again. It looks like it's a it's a good day. Like it's, it's so warm the weather. now. It was only a, a, just a week ago. It was uh, it snowed like these little snowballs out of nowhere. But and it's been but it's super hot now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. California is pretty hot too. We're running the AC here right now. <laughs> oh, wow. But, no so kidding. tell me about your yeah, your okay. workshop there. This is this is where you live. This is your place, right? Yeah. So yeah. So here I'll give you a little. So it's kind of like this. There, the apartment is up there. Wow. Okay. See. Yeah. And then it's like a really old setup. So it's like uh, these old doors. These doors have been around for uh, I don't know, like a hundred years probably. Wow. This thing's like a hundred years. And um, 
Let's see. Let's flip this around. Sorry about the flip around. So, you know, I, you know, I'm at the bikes and stuff, so I've got bicycles and then they got the standard thing, but I got a welding setup and then, uh, let's see back here. I, I, I like small engines, even though I'm into electric cars, I got a lot of small engines. This one, what this does, this is special. This one, what it does is, this is what I call the piston delete. So it's hard to see in there, but there's a crankshaft. Oh, he got cut off. Frozen. Uh, yeah, hopefully he can. He's in his shop, though. I wonder. Oh, I don't know. Hopefully he'll connect again. And then uh, over oh, here is like uh, small engines. Oh. We got some batteries. Look oh, out! Oh, look at that! Eighteen six fifties. Yeah, these are all these are all probably dead. <laughs> but I've been messing around with charging it and stuff. You know, there's so much to learn about the batteries. Yeah. I just think it's so amazing. You know, I don't know if people realize your channel has a has such incredible resources. Like, for instance, um, let's say you're a person watching this thing and you're just getting into batteries um you know you got to take these batteries and you got to see if they're good or not i don't know where my charger is right now all right that was bad timing but i don't know where i bet anyway you have these chargers and the charger charges it up and then it's it, it, and then it de and then it and then it charges it oops let's switch the camera Oh, and then it brings it up and then slowly brings it down and tells you the capacity. Yeah. And then you take that and you write the capacity right on the battery. And it's everything that you do. It's like, I've been watching you do that for years. And I finally, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me try that myself. <laughs> yes. Well, and it, now it's so good because now we're getting decent sales. Before we were getting a bunch of those, 1100 900 right? They're like dead already. They're beat to hell already. So yeah. now we're getting packs that we're breaking apart, put them on the chargers. They're like 100%. The batteries are like me. Wow, no kidding. Yeah, and That's it's amazing. crazy. I just I just got in 6,000 packs in my shop uh, that I'm going to post on the website and stuff. And they're like, you crack them open, you throw them in the charger, 100% capacity on them. You know, and you're like, what? Wow. It's crazy. <laughs> And, and these batteries are just incredible. You know, uh, just messing around we, um, with uh, Jesse from that. Now, you know, we, we put an inline fuse and we popped five amp fuse. Then we popped a 10, then a 15. And then I was like, no way, it's 20. No way. We popped a, a 20 amp inline fuse the blade type that you put in a in a car, in a car. Yeah, yeah and i was like wow that's amazing i mean Dude, it just has some so of them much do, power if, like, if it's a good sell it's got the vtc sixes that we have that'll pop a 50 amp fuse no problem what yeah oh my god those things are that's pretty incredible. scary uh so anyways yeah. uh for those of you who don't know ron is a teacher right you teach kids and grown up yeah. too high school High school. High school and college. And but the, the college, I took a break from that because it, it kind of, like, there wasn't a good turnout in uh, in the fall. So we just sort of said, all right, let's hit pause on that. Actually, good timing because nothing would have happened this spring anyway. Yeah. You know? uh, but, yeah, I teach high school 15 years. Next year will be my 16th year teaching high Damn, school. Damn, 15 years. And, uh, You're old, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there, dude. I, you know. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, it's funny because I'm in better shape than when I was in, when I was younger, but I, you <laughs> but I'm definitely getting older. I'm wiser but, uh, than I was when I was in high school. I got school, the so. I, I shaved so that you can't see the gray, but oh. that's gray, man. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, so I shave it too. So yeah. how? So you're not going to school right now? This the it's all remote stuff. They they canceled the whole thing, and um, you know, and good thing too. But you know, it's so funny. They had a faculty meeting the last day of school. And I was like, why are you gonna get us all together when everybody's warning us to get apart? So we all got together. 
Well, you know, that's, that's <laughs> and the way gift. I'm like, don't do that, you know. So I kept my distance, distance, you know. A going away um, gift, you know. There's some that? little. It's a going away gift. Here's a little Corona. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. Here's a little Corona. <laughs> Call it the Corona. Yeah, I mean, there there are kids affected by it, and uh-huh. um, some of their parents got it. And there's some. There's actually a teacher that died. What? From it. I didn't. I didn't know her, but yeah. But I've heard. Actually, not from your school then. From another school? Not from your site? From your school? From my district. From your district. Not from my high school. Wow. But yeah, people have died from okay, it. Okay, let me ask year. you this. Anyone that you know personally has had it? No. No. Oh, had it? Yeah. Okay, got infected. Okay, one former student said that they had it, but they never got the test. They just had a fever and felt awful for like two weeks wow. and then recovered. I feel awful every unclear, day. Unclear. Unclear. If they had just a regular <laughs> fever. Yes. Unclear. I yeah. get fevers and feel unwell all the time, but that don't mean I... Yeah. Or, or does it? Wait, so no one that you know... So no, uh, definitely no one that you know has died. And it's crazy because you're there. You're in the epicenter. You're in New York. You know a lot of people yeah. in the city. Right? Uh, I, you, I know someone that died from it because they announced it, but I haven't seen her in... Uh, she, she used to come to our happy hours. I haven't seen her in years. But yeah, she was a teacher in the district. And then another supervisor's sister-in-law, she died from it. I never met her. So, you know, there's confirmed two teachers in the district and then a whole bunch of, I mean, sorry to say, but there's a lot of old people that died from it. Yeah. I'm worried about my dad. He's 81. Yeah. We, we kept him. He's under wraps. <laughs> he's on house arrest. Him. Yeah, we put him under house arrest. We're like, my sister and I are like, you're not going anywhere. And he doesn't like it, but. Ah. Yeah, yeah, dude. I so I was the same way. I'm like, I don't know anyone. This is all fake, man. Where's where are all the deaths? But slowly, you know, now are like a little bit, a few here, and you know, like I operate in large circles, right? Like, I know a bunch of people in New York. I know a bunch of people here. The the car people, you know, the the, the Volkswagen community, the the battery community, all that stuff, right? And there's. You hear things here and there, but now personally that I know at least a couple people or three or four people I think that I know personally uh, had infected and uh, only a couple of them oh, that were oh, sick. Did you talk to Bream? Bream said he had it. Yes. I haven't Bream. talked to him, but He said I he heard. had it and he beat it and he didn't know what it was until afterwards. Oh, at the afterwards. He said he got it before Austin, Texas... What was that big event we went to? No, I before that. Fully charged. That's what he said. He said before fully charged. No. Nah. He said he hit his. Yeah, he said his family got sick like really bad, uh-huh. and then they tested him for antibodies. Uh huh. And which he has is them. another way of testing. Yeah, he has them. Dude, that, that means he infected all of us. I was hanging out with him. I. Oh, we were all hanging out. And, you know, here's the thing. At that time, it was kind of early, right? Yeah. But I'm like, I'm going to, the, I'm going to like, the, the airport to fly to Texas. I'm like, let's get some masks. Like, I don't, you know, we're not the only ones, but we were kind of weird. I know Crystal saw some celebrities that she knows. Seth Green? No, Seth, Seth, not Seth Green. Uh, Seth, whatever. I don't know. That's some actor guy. And, um... She went up to him, said hi, took pictures of them stuff, and we looked like weirdos because we were wearing masks. Oh, and they were not, right? And so I was like, oh, maybe you should have taken your mask off because I don't, maybe people are... At that point, it was like, maybe you're making people uncomfortable because you're, why are you wearing a mask? You know, that whole thing. But as soon as we got to Texas, we took off that mask, right? And we didn't use it, and we met all those people there. Hang out with Brian. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about wearing a mask uh, at all. What that wasn't even on the radar for me. Really? And uh, man, that, that, that was been February. Dangerous. What was that? That was like early February or late February. I can't remember. Early um, February. It was like February too. First first weekend of March, maybe or something like that. Uh no, it was February. I oh, think it was February. It was no, February, first the second. February maybe or something. First and second, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, those are the dates. You know what? You know what's interesting. Remember how Robert Robert Llewellyn he 
disappeared for that weekend. That's right. Was you know, that what he was sick for? Sick or something. I don't know. Whoa. But, it, you know, maybe something else. Who knows? Uh, maybe. Uh, who knows? Right. We don't know. But, yeah. But he was yeah. sick. Wait, so you're saying that Bream said that he got sick before that, though? Got sick before it. Said oh, he felt like he was going to die. And uh, he, uh, he said that... Uh, uh, that he recovered, but then um, they tested him later, uh, and they found an antibodies. I don't, know. I don't know how all this stuff works, you know. I mean, well, yeah, the way I understand it, it, the way I understand it, yeah, if your body has the antibodies, then you're immune, and you're either immune because you've had it already, or because uh, you're just naturally immune, right? Again, I, I am legend, yeah. right? That dude was immune supposedly. So that's why. I mean, it's it's been interesting. Like, there's, I mean, I feel bad for people that got it, and obviously, it's very serious for businesses that are affected and whatnot, and families. But there is like a benefit. Like, it gave everybody kind of a break. Yeah, you know, the planet needed a break, but Dude, it's dangerous, yeah. man. It's da I think we're all gonna suffer greatly from this little break of ours, right? I think. Give it six months, a year from now, we're all going to be struggling financially because this is this like business. You can't just stop business. Like, it takes a lot to to be able to put this this show together. You know what I mean? Like this thing that we yeah. that we are enjoying, where we don't have to worry about food, we don't have to worry about all kinds of stuff. And the reason why we don't have to worry about it is because someone else is worrying about it and someone else is doing it. But if they're home right now, not worrying about that. There's going to be a gap in production. There's going to, there's going to catch up, right? And it's weird because you, you heard about Elon, how he's like, you know, uh, civil disobedience. He's like, I'm going to open up these factories. The weird thing is that, like, he's going to go and open up the factory. But, like, what about the screw manufacturers? What about the, you know, seals, the rubber people, the paint manufacturers? You know, those are oh some of the... Down the line, those are non-essential businesses, supposedly, right? They're not back to work yet, right? So maybe there's stuff in the in the shelves, and maybe they're gonna sell them that, so we can keep going. Yeah. But there's a giant gap that is coming, and then well, we gotta ramp up production because for two months we weren't doing anything, so we're all gonna see that eventually. You think maybe good. like we're not feeling it yet, but we will. But we will. We will. Interesting. We, we I think might. you're right because. You know, it takes a lot of money to run the schools as well. And um, they're not saying it yet, but if someone said to me, uh, hey, Ron, we don't have money for electives, you know, because I'm not a state requirement. I'm my my shop teacher is kind of like the first one to go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're not like one of the most essential jobs, teaching people how to actually make stuff, you know, but they don't uh, view it that way. It's we don't have to worry about places. making they stuff because China's places. doing it. Yeah. Right? So, you know, uh, if they said to me, oh, man, you know, like, uh, we're going to cut back, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I I'm not going to like it, but, you know, I wouldn't, I'm wouldn't. i not going to be like, oh, my God, that's so shocking. I'm, you know, I see what's coming. Yeah, I agree. Well, you could just come to California and help me make electric cars. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, we got to talk about potentially this summer, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about it for people that are, yeah. might be listening to this. So, of course, I have a YouTube channel where I do stuff, right? I DIY a bunch of things, batteries, cars. I started originally with my car. I wanted a classic car. I want an electric car. I didn't care about the classic too much, but I, I knew that I liked this particular car growing up. It just sucked. Right, it, the engine was under power. The it would leak oil. It was unreliable. So then, I was like, "Well, let's get it now. Let's put this electric motor in there. Now it should fix all the problems." Bam! Seven years later, here I am driving around my bus. I'm on my second one. Now I have third. I've uh, this plan, this crazy plan to to build a fleet of them and take them to Hawaii. Right now, that that kind of the coronavirus thing that kind of shot that whole business plan down. Yeah. for yeah. the time being anyways uh, but but I have this place now that I'm currently setting up that is gonna help me uh, you know convert them right and in my channel I make a lot of content a lot of you know do-it-yourself you know guides and 
you know, just discussions about how to convert cars. People have been asking me for years, for years, you know, how, how do you learn? How does one learn about this? Where, what college can I go to learn this thing? And for the most part, I mean, there's a couple of little things, courses that people can take, but but they're kind of hard to get to, right? I mean, you originally learned in one of those courses, right? Yeah, actually, you know, it's super rare, you yeah. know, uh, to, to learn how to convert your car. But what happened was in 2006, I, I was interested in the idea. And then a friend of mine, he had nothing to do with cars. And he said, why don't you just type in to Google, which was new at the time. <laughs> he says, type into Google uh, how to convert or, or electric car conversion class. And I was like, there's no way there's a class, you know. And so then I uh, um, typed it in and this guy popped up in San Diego. There you and go. His name's, um, they call him Mr. Q. Mr. And he's Q. a former shop teacher. Yeah. And he got together with a bunch of people and they converted rabbits, you know, Volkswagen rabbits, the front wheel drive cars. Uh, that and was it, was, it was 300 bucks. And I couldn't get into the 2006 class and there was no class in 2007, so I waited to 2008 to get this class. Now, you know, back then it was normal to wait years for some <laughs> for something, but now no one would tolerate that. You know, uh, they would just look <laughs> elsewhere. But there was no elsewhere. You know, well, so, the, yeah, there isn't right. Even now, today, this is two thousand. This this is many years ago. I mean, this is like a decade ago, right? More than yeah. a decade ago. Yeah. What else? Uh, is has is there now? I mean, if you, like if you t it's it's almost the same problem with the welding as well. Like, you could take a trade school, adult night you know night school for welding, and you got to commit to the year, and it's thousands of dollars. Or you could go to college, and they might have a welder there. Or you got a friend that teaches you welding, but there's no crash course, and that's something I offer is I do the welding class. So then I thought. Well, couldn't I do uh, like an electric car class? So I, we did two of them already, but it would be great to join forces and do like a, uh, you know, like a, like a crash course. Here's how to do it. When you come out, you're going to know everything you need to know. It's yeah. super, you know, it's, it's, it's like in your face, like it's hands on and the concepts. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, people have been asking me for this for a long time, and I'm like, nah, get out of here. I don't want, you know, it's like, this is a big deal. Like, you got to get a car, and, you know, you're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, right? Like, you can't, but now I'm thinking, okay, I got this fleet to convert. Why don't we use that? Why don't we uh, kill two birds with one stone, right? Uh, I mean, I don't know why we have to kill anyone, but anyways, uh, we can have people come and help us build these cars, and have a class that is from beginning to end and by the time you're done you're 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 taking a turn taking the car around for a spin you know what i mean like uh, I, I think it's great like you know i'll tell you what when we were done with that conversion in the 2000 in the summer of 2008 in san diego mm -hmm. uh first of all california is beautiful so like you know you <laughs> live there but like Anybody not from, you know, California, they get to come to California to mess around with cars. It's like a dream come true. It's so much fun. Yeah. Um, but so when we were done, I had enough hands-on knowledge that I went straight back to Jersey and we bought a car, bought the components, um, and did the conversion within the year. So if someone was looking to do a conversion, it's worth it to just to participate in a hands-on class because then you could walk right out of there yeah and just do your own conversion yeah i know that a lot of people learn with books right books is a thing that is you know universally accepted as a learning tool right so you learn you uh read a thing and then you you study it and then you answer questions all stuff right which is it's fine it's great uh, there are a lot of people like me who didn't uh, traditionally learn in books, right? I, was, I wasn't allowed to go to school for whatever reasons it was when I was a kid. So I had to figure out how to learn it on my own, right? And it's, it was mostly hands-on, do it, you know. I learned carpentry on the field. I was, I was actually working, doing the thing. So I think there's, 
when it comes to something like this, when it comes to uh, uh, something as complex, I mean, I don't think it's complex, but I guess a lot of people, to a lot of people, it can be seen like a daunting task, right? And so I think with something about this level of complexity, hands-on would be really yep. empowering because you can learn, you can read all the books you want, right? Yeah. But I think there's a different thing when you're like, no, we built the car, we went there, we wrenched on it, we put the motor, we connected it, and it spun. And two hours yeah, later, we're going I have around. A, I have a thing I say about learning from books and whatnot, and you know, I, um, let's just put it this way. You can't read how to ride a bicycle. <laughs> no, you can't. No. Exactly. I mean, I could give you, I mean, think about it. Like, here's a repair book on the small engine's lawnmower, right? Yeah. You could read this whole thing. But until you actually make a repair, you know, you don't really know what's going on. You never felt the tool in your hands. You never understood. You ever, and you got to learn through failure. Like when you ride a bicycle, you, you fall and you're like, oh, I can't hit the front brake before the back brake. Otherwise, I flip over the handlebars. You learn the hard way. Yeah. How many mistakes have you made on the cars you built? Oof. I mean, it's all mistakes. It's one big yeah. giant yeah. mistake. But here's the thing, though. Uh, I, seven years later, eight years now, I'm driving around in the car. Like, the car's running around, right? Um, you don't have to make it perfect. That's the thing. A lot of people are like, all right, all right, let's let's plan it out let's you know work it all out every single nut every single thing and you're like well that's that's one way to do it you know and it works for a lot of people you can just wing it like <laughs> just go for it and yeah. as long as you're not super dumb and make huge mistakes you should be able to yeah this stuff is so great like this technology is so reliable that like you're running right like so yeah, I, I say don't be afraid. I'm like, I always tell people, just don't be afraid. Do it. You know, do it, do it. Just get the stuff, get whatever you, you know, go go as far as you can, right? Finish it up to a point where, like, you can drive it around. Who cares about it? I drove my car without windows for two years because <laughs> I didn't have the money to finish it, right? So I didn't have the budget. It's, it was really expensive back then. Now it's a little bit cheaper. Um, but I'm like, that's not going to stop me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to... I'm gonna do it to the point where I can drive it around, even if it doesn't have windows, and then little by little I'll start putting it together, right? So, yeah. Did you, um, you know, the one thing I gotta say, uh, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna toot your horn here, Jehu. You know, you <laughs> he, he, you know, Jehu likes to say that you know it's just go for it. It's easy. It's not easy, but yeah. he does have the right approach. Like I, I respect what you do, but. There, you know, there are some fundamentals, counting the amps, yeah. calculating your watts, keeping yeah. things cold when they, you know, or understanding, uh, you know, what happens if something overheats, fail safe, you know, like when things break, like everything breaks. Yeah. But what do you do when they do break? You can't quickly disconnect stuff. So you got to have a fuse that'll take care of it, you know? Yeah. So like there's things in place that allow this process. On. I forgot to put a fuse in my bus. I'm yeah. gonna, hold on, let me go put a fuse in my bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I have fuses. <laughs> yeah, you, you do have to understand the basics. You gotta have a basic understanding of what you're doing or else you're yeah. not gonna, you know, you're gonna put a, the clutch in the, you know, in the wheel or something, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever bought um, someone else's conversion and did something with it? So I yes I'm I have now I have bought a few of them and um, I haven't I haven't built anything with them yet but yeah I plan to I plan to to so for instance like you know now that I have this knowledge. Um, that's right. This is a good segue. Yeah, you, don't, you don't have to. You don't have to do your own car. Like for instance, I was like, okay, you know, I use the school budget to do all the projects. 
right? I mean, it's not my personal car. But then I was like, you know, I want my own car. But the timing and the money, I was like, you know what? Let me get someone else's car. So because I understand how the system works, I was able to go on to uh, eBay and leave the search. And the search says um, electric conversion. So the first one comes up is like a piece of garbage that was in, uh, uh, you know, in lead acid batteries sitting there in Florida in the mud. I was like, okay, I'm not buying that. And then (laughs) another one came up and it's in the... Canada and I was like okay I'm not gonna get that and then all of a sudden this 1988 Fiero came up the Pontiac Fiero and it's already converted and it was converted by an engineer in California and I was like oh my god it's right here in New Jersey so I went to go see it and I was like I thought to myself let me just see if the motor spins I had a number in my head that I was willing to pay (laughs) Okay. Right? Yeah. Because I don't trust anybody when you buy a car. I don't trust anyone when you buy a car. So the guy says, oh, yeah, it runs and drives. I go, okay, can you drive it? He goes, oh, I don't feel like driving it right now. I was like, no, there's something wrong. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, there's something wrong. So I was like, okay, motor, controller, and who knows what's going on with the batteries, maybe some other components. That's worth a certain amount in my head. I was like, okay, okay. So I put a bid of 4,100 in and then I went home. And by the time I got home, the bid had the end, bid end, it had ended. And I thought it's going to go way past that. 1800 bucks, <laughs> 1800 bucks. The car works. It just had a couple problems, which I could explain. But with this knowledge, let's say you take a class on this. You don't have to do your own conversion. You yeah. can buy someone else's and make improvements. Yeah. There is definitely quite a bit of that. Uh, they used to be really rare, those conversions, but now they're popular. I, It's hard of me for me to keep track of just the buses. How many electric buses show up to the shows? I used to oh, be yeah. the only one. I used to be the king for years, right? And now I'm like, oh, there goes another one. Who is that? I don't know. I never talked to them. Like, it's, there's so many. There's so, A lot of people are, are starting to. So you yeah, bought this for eighteen hundred bucks, and it's a full car, full conversion. Uh, well, I yeah. th- I'd say you show it to us. Let us see it. All right, let's go look at it. Let's go look at it. Cause you have it there, right? Yeah. Hold on. You drive it? I gotta just. I can drive it. The problem is. But you don't feel like. Uh, it. We're um. <laughs> oh yeah, we're. Uh, I think you. You're changing your connection, right? Because I think he's at a range where where the car's at. Yeah, so I did some similar. I I bought systems that other people put in in cars and stuff. All right, there she is. Oh, look at that! It's a green one, and look at that! It's got a. Uh, it's it's got those yellow batteries. Those are Winston uh, batteries. Yeah, these are, uh, let's see, got all hey, this stuff. Let me get in here. Hey, those are big batteries. Oh, they're, yeah. They're like 200 amp hours or something, right? Yeah, I can't remember exactly. Let me see. They Let look like. The, I have a flashlight. Hold on. They look like the 200 amp ones, amp hour ones. Can I turn the flashlight on the phone on? For sure you can. Uh, no, flashlight's not going to work. It's not going to work? Okay. You can see no. it. It doesn't seem like it's too dark. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Thunder Sky. Oh, Thunder Sky. Yes. So all these companies uh, kind of split off from each other, I think, in the early days. And Winston and... Cal and Thunder Sky. Balcon was another one. That's what I put on my bus. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. It's got two yep. contactors, just like mine. Yep. Yeah. So apparently I wasn't was the only one. one. What? Apparently I wasn't yeah. the only one burning up contactors. Look at that. That's a 5,000 yep. uh, watt charger. I gotta get. I gotta get a flashlight. Yeah. Where's my, where's my flashlight? Hold on. 
you hear the guy doing construction above me? It, it sounds like a car going by, but yeah, they're just they're doing the you know the wood there. Ah, they're above. doing the wood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do I have time to get? Oh, there's my flashlight. Hold on. Hold on. I got it. Wait. Okay. Hang on a second. I'm gonna get the light. There you go. So it's got a big charger. It's got uh, big batteries. That is definitely a, you know, a deal right there for eighteen hundred bucks. Oh my God. All right. This limits your charger so that you don't uh... overcharge. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you don't uh, break, um, short out your wall charger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here's an amp meter. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a, uh, yeah. And uh, this is your, um, obviously, the charger. It's a five kilowatt. Five kilowatt charger. Yeah. And then in here is the uh, controller. That's the. Uh, no, no water cooling, just air cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then uh, I got my 12 volt right here. Yeah. And then uh, what's cool is that it's actually really well done. So let's get inside the car. It's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> That's got to there. Are those yeah. analog meters, uh, analog amp meters? Okay, so check this out, man. This is like straight out of the 80s, right? <laughs> Look at this, like GM key, you know? Yeah. And we go in here. All right. There she goes. She's the door. Oh, I see the trunk is open. That's why the door ajar. Oh, yeah. Let me clean the lens. Hold on. Make sure. All right, that's better. Yeah, wow. Oh, my God. And um, now it's got pop-up lights. You ready? Oh, look at that. Yeah. And they're, they're, uh, they're LED. They're LED. Okay. So now, and these are like red. Oh, I'll turn off this light. See this? you know it's like 80s and they got a 12 volt battery this is oil it always just there's no oil so it just kind of does that it's got um it's got a heater heater yeah it's got a bluetooth retro stereo so it's actually it's it'll it'll do it'll connect to your phone this was all retro put in that's cool yeah and then it actually has a state of charge which goes with the gas, with the gas uh, meter so it does work like when it's fully charged yeah. it's fully yeah it's it worked off. it's i wouldn't rely on it though because it's, it's off by about like 25 percent <laughs> okay yeah, yeah that's not good and it shifts right so it's yeah. got the shifter and then you kind of okay so let's oh there we go Oh, no way. It tells you the RPMs. Oh, my God. You just redline it. Yeah, that was the RPM. And then what's cool is that up here, you've got what you, you know, RPM digital. Yeah. Too much info. Or and, and from you can click this button and you can toggle through everything. So you oh, go like this. Okay. Yeah, There's yeah, your yeah. amps. Yeah. Regen. Regen. Yeah. Uh, voltage. Oh. We just step on the pedal, right? How many batteries does it have? You know, in series? Yeah, good question. I think like 45 maybe. I can't no, remember. No, it can't be because that's 109 volts. Either that or it's like super low. Uh, maybe it's a little low. Now, here's what's wild is, okay, let me get out of the car for a second. Uh, oh, the lights are on. Okay. Now, this is the crazy thing. If the guy who built this car 
he he made a uh, he made a like a really good um, documentation. Uh-huh. If he farted, it's in the book. <laughs> okay. Okay. Everything. Okay. This is everything you ever wanted to know. Here's the, Jesus. Yeah, the Here's bathroom. The, um, the manual. He even has. Like here's he even wrote out like his whole plan on how he was doing it. Wow! He's got schematics, everything you'd possibly want. Any part that was made, and you know Canadian Electric, the adapter plate. He's got stuff from MV West. He's got. That's if crazy. he did an oil change on the gear oil on the transmission, <laughs> he put it in here. That's Tires, crazy. everything. That's crazy, and then he sold it to you for eighteen hundred bucks. Oh, there's the yes. HPVS. Oh, he bought the. Okay, that's so a straight from HPVS. That's crazy. He paid more money. Yep. And I added it all up. Really? It's like around. It's around twenty five hundred dollars. And twenty five thousand. You know, for eighteen hundred. Yeah, with everything. Twenty five thousand. Yeah. Wow. Twenty five thousand. That's sorry. Yeah. yeah. Twenty five thousand, and you got it for eighteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then there's also one more thing, one more piece of the puzzle, and then we'll get back to get back to the other shop there. This is the uh, the oh wait, if you're looking at me. You gotta look at the thing. There you go. There's the other set of batteries, and there's two of them in there. Yeah, the front and the back. Yeah, front and the back, there and it's go. got this like green paint job. Yeah. And then it's crazy. Uh, and then look, one more thing. This is where you Where is it? Uh okay. Uh you can't see this. Oh, here we go. This is where your finger goes. Okay? And then you open the door. Oh, it's got I see. The, oh, wait a minute. He took that little thing from the charger. Yeah. Yeah, that little thing, right? <laughs> ah, that's dumb because it blinks and you're supposed to like count or something. Rather, right? It's like you have to think about it. You it's can't just like look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. It's it kind of doesn't annoying. really work that great. But it's yeah, something. That's why I have a problem with it that I want to. S- I have to solve something. There's a problem. Oh, there I is. Don't charge at a public charger. Oh, okay. I can only charge. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, I think the the AV, AVC two. Yeah. The AV two circuit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Either it doesn't have power or it burned yeah. up or something. Oh, I mean, it's like a twenty dollar. Yeah, that part. thing right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That. So you just that have to troubleshoot it, see if it's got power, see if it's got the uh, the proximity. There's only like five cables, right? There's like not much going on there, but yeah, if if it doesn't. That, you know, I burned one or I had a faulty one and I just, you know, kind of scratched my head for a while. And then eventually I just ordered another one, a new one, popped it right in, and it just worked. Okay. So yeah, my I'm wiring was right. Like that. Just, yeah. Let me get out of the dungeon here. Craziness. Right? So, by the way, by those of you that are watching this, that is essentially the same system that I have on my bus, in my buses, uh, and that would be the same system that that we would be putting together in a, uh, you know, in a in a bus if you were to take our class. I mean, it's essentially that's it's a system that has been running f- f- with me for me on my vehicle for like almost ten years now. Uh, Ron just bought that vehicle. It's probably probably about ten years old too, uh, and it, they're pretty yeah. reliable. You're back. And those are yeah. pretty reliable systems. They work. They're easy. They're kind of plug and play, right? And that's why I like them. That's why I want to convert my buses with them like that because I already know how to use them. I know how to install them, and. You know, even pa- past the first owner, he's the uh, run is the second owner of that system, and uh, I'm sure you're gonna get a lot of, a lot of years, a lot of mileage out of that. That car was built, converted in 2012. Wow, 
that's eight years old and there's eight not much old. wrong with it. Yeah. So it's, it's around my couple things. Same thing as mine. Mine is seven years old. All right. Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. So yeah, those systems they last forever. Those motors, there's nothing to go wrong. The right. controllers, there's no moving parts. It's basically a, a bank of MOSFETs. They turn on and off, but those have a lifetime of like millions and billions of times, right, to be turned on and off. Uh, the motor has two bearings. There's nothing. I mean, the wheels fall off before anything goes wrong with these systems. I've had a couple of issues with, uh, with the sensors. You probably have an external sensor on that motor, too. And I guess if it hasn't had a problem, no big deal. But mine, I guess it was like rubbing against the little sensor, and it was like grinding up against the, the, the sensing part. And then so you'd have to change it. And, yeah, I'm on my... You know, what, you know what was wrong with it when I got it that um, I had to fix? So here's the stuff I had to fix. The DC to DC charger okay. had failed. Okay. The, the, the owner that had it in New Jersey, I think it was just outside the scope of what he was willing to do. But all it was is I took it out, you open it up, and it burnt the fuse. Oh. Now, why did it burn the fuse? Because he was using a battery. He was using... Um, these little batteries, hold on. Oh, like a little motorcycle battery or something like that. Yeah, like a little, this is literally what came out of the car. Oh, wow. And it's not even a lead it's acid. It's not enough. It's steel. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you got, he has a, a, a sound system, mm -hmm. you got lights, you got, no way. And, and a heater, forget it. Not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, you need yep. a, you need a sizable battery in there. I mean, you're going to, you can put a lithium battery in there, but. Uh, you know, I, I had a lithium battery there for a while and then it was giving me problems because it was too small. It was the same thing. It was too small of a battery. And then eventually I was stranded somewhere and I had to go to the store and buy a lead acid battery. So I just threw it in there. I never had to touch it again. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, they're, they're kind of bulletproof. It, they got a good yeah. reservoir. Yeah. You, you know, the steel... Am I right? The C rating on a lead acid battery is like insane. Yeah. Ah. I mean, there you can, like uh, A one two three cells are up there too, right? Like, okay. But but yeah, no, definitely uh, lead acids could put out some power, and they don't care, right? They can crank out. Oh, somebody that that makes battery packs. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Hey, so we didn't talk about you called me to see what you wanted to send me that back, and I was like, no, nah, don't send it to me. Give it away. If you don't, you okay. know, give it away okay. to your audience or whatever. Uh, sure. Okay, yeah. yeah, I'll do a giveaway or something. Yeah. That'd be make cool. a post. Uh, make a post. I'll promote it on the channel so that you can they can follow you, and then sure. uh, they can win a battery, right? That's Cause, cool. Because you already yeah, built that. Thing's... You built a project that? with that, right? Yeah, we did it. We did. Uh, we did a lawnmower with the Now You Know channel, Zach and Jesse. Uh, we converted a, a gas mower to electric, but first we did it with uh, like a drill. Then we did it with. Um, then we did it with a motor, uh, and then we did it with a um, with a, a pack that we built, and then we did it with the Jehu pack, the, the ammo pack. Wait, are and those then, out yet or no? What's that? Are those published yet or no? Yeah, they put out three of them already. Okay. So they put one out today. We didn't get to your oh. battery yet. We didn't oh, okay. even get to batteries yet. We, we actually... Oh, this is a long the, series. Uh, tractor battery. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we do, we're doing it by first we're doing a drill, you know, um, like literally. This is the drill. We powered a lawnmower with that. Oh, and it worked. Yeah. I guess we'll yeah. have to go see the episode, right? Yeah, yeah. You got, yeah. You got to tune in. Got to tune in. Wait. So all these projects are done now. Now they're just being published, or you're still yeah, working well, on some of them? It, so the car is halfway. Wait, that's a different one. That's a car. This is yeah. not a thing. Really? Yeah. Also, oh, you're way yeah. ahead. You're you're flying through these projects, and you know. I, I I can't even believe how fast it went. So we started with the lawnmower, okay. and then um then we went to the riding tractor, a riding mower. So it's not really a tractor. It's like a riding, riding mower. lawnmower. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, while I was there, they're like, "Oh, let's buy a car." I was like, "All right." <laughs> so they bought a ah. 1975 MG. Oh, okay, those little ones. The midgets. Yes, 
midget, the midget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Why? Why? People like those, and they're yeah, they're they're light. They're small. They're light. So. Oh my God, Jehu, they're so much fun to drive. When it was still gas, <laughs> I was hammering. I was like, <laughs> <"Nim!"> <laughs> <laughs> but you're only going like forty-five miles an hour. Yes. <laughs> and you're maxed out. It's just. It's like the buses, like the bus, like you're literally doing 45 miles an hour. You feel like you're flying, like it's going to fall apart, like your life is in danger, right? And you're only doing like yeah. 40 miles an hour. So yeah, you're, like, ah, nothing, yes. you know? you're white knuckling it. You're like, ah, 35. <laughs> yes. That's so funny. Well, yeah, that's pretty cool. Your bus is such a beautiful ride. Like when you're sitting in that bus and the, what do you call that window that opens up in front? The safari windows. Safari windows. Safari window. And the air comes straight at your face. Yes. It, it's like the, it's like you're a kid all yes. over again. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, Especially like, right now. With your head out the window. It's amazing. Yeah. You know? And right now, you know, like you can drive it down the street, open the window, and you you know your 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 lungs don't burn because you're not because the clean the air is clean right now. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, it's true. Because the yeah, cool, it's, it's a cool thing to be breathing air. It's unbelievable. Yeah, the cool thing is you're you're breathing air, but like when you're driving around with other cars, everybody's nobody no nobody realizes that all their cars are spewing like just poison, like literally it's poison. There's like, and you're I with because I have the window open, I'm breathing it right, and I'm like, oh my god, I was like, Jesus, close this window because. This guy's particularly bad in front of me, you know? But I feel like a jerk because I'm like, oh, I'm just this douche guy, you know, just complaining about fumes, you know? But it's, nobody else notices them, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, when you ride when you ride a bicycle, you're going down the street, and then someone's next to you, and you're sitting at a light, and then they take off. And it's just like, oh, my God. And you can, and if you're uh, any sort of mechanical, you know what's wrong. So you can smell... Whether they're burning oil, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're burning. Yeah, if it's rotten eggs, they got, if the fuel is too rich. Dude, the worst rich, one is the water. When they have a, a leaky gasket. Doesn't that yeah. stink so bad? Oh. Burning water, well, it's because it's not water, it's that glycol, it's that antifreeze. Yeah. Or that stuff stinks. It's terrible. Like, oh, God. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, and you're then, right. You know, and then, and then also, like, uh, uh, diesel. So the diesel passes you by, and then it's like, oh, it's pungent. I feel like I'm being punched in the nostrils yeah. with diesel. Oh, and it also has the, the sut, too. It's got that black stuff that, right? Mm -hmm. That's nasty. Yep. I saw the other day a guy driving down the road here, and he was in a diesel truck, and he had a big pallet of something in the back. And every single time we take off, he he was driving like a like a race car, Brrr! but like the the stack of just black smoke that was coming off of this thing it was like, what in the world is this? Yeah, you know, like, yeah, any all kinds of noise, and it sounded like it was going. And again, it was he Brrr! he was like going twenty miles an hour. I was keeping up with my bus. <laughs> in total silence <laughs> I was like I'm going to stay back here because I don't want to smell all that black stuff <laughs> and, and look you know I tell people you know look, I'm a piston guy too like I really like the way the mechanical operation yeah. of piston engines I think it's amazing I also like steam engines Yeah. I also okay. like when you get on like an old elevator like I just love all that stuff but do I want to breathe that stuff no I'll choose not to breathe it. Thank yeah. you very much. You know? <laughs> yeah, there's also beauty and simplicity of the, the electric cars and electric systems, right? Uh, really? There's simplicity. Mechanically, they're super simple, but yep. electronically, they're not, right? There's a lot of stuff happening there, and depending on how your brain works, you might get really into that stuff. Uh, yeah, there's, there's like words that people say, like, like someone will be like, like you, you'll say, oh, yeah, the MOSFET burnt out. What the hell's a MOSFET, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like if you, if you, if someone takes the time to learn it, it's just a non-mechanical solid state relay. It's just an on-off switch. That's yeah. all it is. And like once someone calms down and figures out that this stuff's actually pretty cool, it's basically 
mechanical operations, but with microchips. So there's no noise and there's no wasted energy. It's an, it's incredible. It's like a it's like a gift from the universe. Like what is this stuff? It's amazing. Semiconductors. You know? Yeah. yeah, semiconductors. What is that? Like, what is like that? I'm talking to you on the phone right now. You know, when I, you know, when I was a kid, you'd pick up the phone. You know, you'd be like, "All right, Jim," you know, <laughs> whatever. And then, like, if you got mad, you'd hang up. <clears throat> hang up. You know. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like click. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once you start going in deep down into like what stuff that makes our you know modern life go. Yeah, you start looking into semiconductors and silicon, and you're like, what? What do you mean? It's just the uh, world. It's just a bunch of, like, switches. It's just a yeah. bunch of switches, like billions of them in the phone. It's just switches. On, off, on, off, on, off. Mm -hmm. Right? We out of silicon. And, they, you, yeah, it's just, it's a two-state. Yeah, it's such a weird thing, but... Uh, it's so simple, but it goes so complex, and it's it's cool. They're just on-off switches. That's all, you know. Yeah. And then when I teach my students, and what I do in the like in the electric car class we did is um, we teach them about relays, which is counterintuitive. What's yeah. a switch for a switch? Why would you need that? You know, and it's so you could you know control a high amperage situation with a low amperage situation. Yeah. Or you know, or you can do it remotely whatever. too. Yeah. yeah which you can do it remotely too. Like you, you might want to turn a switch over there on that building, but yeah, I'm not over there. Well, you, yeah. you use a switch over here. That's basically yeah. what it, all the all the phone controls. Like if you could turn on a light switch with your phone, yeah. or you could do that. That's basically like a it's a just a solid state relay. Yeah. yeah. You know. So I'm getting into that right now because my next build, I want to do. So I'm trying to figure different ways of making of building stuff that people can easily build, right? Uh, there's a lot of people that need a battery, that don't necessarily want to know what a MOSFET is and those other stuff, right? So I'm like, okay, what's out there in the market that we can use? And a one, there's one of these things that Victron makes is this solid state relay that uh, has pre-programmed settings so it knows like you set the low voltage cutoff and the high voltage cutoff and it literally turn off once it reaches those right or and then it, i think it's got like a little thing to sensor for temperature it also puts like a temperature so it's kind of like a bms but it's like a, a different kind it doesn't check on the actual difference of, it's just it's basically for like a lead acid battery i think but you can use it for lithium but you can literally build a pack, put it there, and then if anything, if it goes out of range, then it just turns it off so that you don't waste that battery. It's also really good for batteries that you might use occasionally. Because that's the problem with lithium. With lithium, with lithium, it's like if you, they drain too much, then you, you can't wake them up or they get, they get damaged if they stay down there for a long time. Yeah, I guess like when people talk about the safety uh factor it's just basically like you just can't overcharge it or let it go too low and then try and charge it up uh, as long as you keep them in the middle as long as you keep them in the middle you're fine it's all about balance jehu no extremes no extremes right? keep your extremes at home leave them at home we're all yeah. we're all balanced here yeah balance it out <laughs> um, but, uh, did I show you the uh, how we put the drill into the uh, motor? I got the thing. Oh, yeah, you no, you didn't. How did that work? I mean, that, that'll that work for a little while, right? But it can't work for a long time. Cause that, I mean, it, it cut grass, but it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't great. It, it wasn't the most set efficient up. setup, right? What's that? It wasn't the most efficient setup. That motor is too small. It was just a proof of concept. Okay. Let me yeah. see if you can see this. By the way, did you end up using a straight up connection or did you use a, a motor, a speed controller? We did, first we did, um, we did straight up. Okay. First. 
for but then we did a speed controller for the ride on mower oh i see 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 yeah good question oh and by the way we counted amps oh. uh, we counted uh, we watched the amps watched the voltage and we calculated ahead of time how long we thought it would last it would run yeah yeah okay yeah so that's a cool thing is that like you could calculate what you think your battery is going to do which is kind yeah. of a fun thing you know all right so uh i don't know how well you're going to see this but basically uh let's see no it goes like this it goes in here like this and then you there would have been an adapter here okay and then you clamp it in <laughs> like it's just clamp. yeah it's That's ridiculous right. it's ridiculous okay there's the clamp there <laughs> and then what's cool is that this was the trigger oh i see so this is connects here and it would spin the flywheel and then this would be the the trigger oh, okay see? and then inside of here now you can finally see it it's just the out of here that's the crankshaft yeah. with no piston so and i had to, is, i had to actually balance it oh you have to balance i was going to ask that yeah is it out of balance yeah, it was it was not balanced because i had already taken the piston out, the piston it, out yeah. it has a counterbalance because of the piston yeah and then when you take the piston out you're now there's no more uh there's no more balance so right. i mean it's kind of cool doing these projects because you learn a lot about engineering because you got, you know, everything has a reaction and you're only as strong as your weakest link. You know, these are great projects for people to do, even if you don't build a electric car, you know, if someone wants to do something like this, they, they do it once and they'll learn so much about batteries and power and uh, all these amazing things. It's basically how the future is gonna run is on batteries and worrying about wattage. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to uh, have you out of here, man. We were planning to do it on the summer, right? But this coronavirus kind of derailed all those plans, right? We Yeah, we might. I don't know what you think. We'll have to figure it out. Do you think we should push it back? Yeah, I mean, definitely. We're, we're not going to okay. be able to. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know, man. Uh, who knows what's going to happen, right? I don't know. Yeah. We're still kind of on lockdown. It's still not, it's not opening up in New Jersey. I mean, it's starting to open up. I don't know. I haven't been outside, so I don't, I don't really know. It, we've never, we were never really like locked down. We were kind of lucky here in California, or at least in this part where I'm at, it wasn't bad. I okay. came to the office every day. I went to the store whenever I wanted. I went to buy stuff yeah. at Lowe's, at Home Depot or whatever. Uh, I'm lucky, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not really affected by this, but yeah. I know I haven't been able to get a haircut in two months. I cut it myself. You don't cut your own hair? Well, I'm going to have to start because <laughs> I haven't been able to get a haircut. So, yeah. what? Yeah, just, uh, yeah come uh, on. <laughs> I don't got my specific, but I'll just do it myself. I've been doing it myself for years. You just look and you go like this. That's all you got to do. You know? Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to start because I can't, I can't get. Uh, there's, there's not open. No one's open. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but, um, you know, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, uh, oh, real quick, just going back for a second about when the when we when we first met was uh, um, you came to New York. You were doing the Casey Every Day YouTube thing. And, I was doing uh, the, the podcast. Uh, I mean, that uh, was such a cool thing because I was blog. following you because I found you through EV West, and I was like, "Oh man, this guy's coming to New York. I gotta contact him." And then we had our electric car ready to go, and uh, I remember we picked you up, we drove you around. But at that time, I never, I wasn't counting the amps, and I wasn't counting. You were crazy. Charge. I was like, "What?" I never did them. Yeah. So I remember at one point you were said to me uh hey you know how much do you have left and i was like eh, i don't know <laughs> yes <laughs> you gotta you gotta put a link to that original video yeah us meeting in new york that is hilarious and you know we ran out of juice on the way home I and we, we 
Yeah. Um, and we went to uh, we went to an auto body shop, and I just begged these guys and these Jamaican guys were like, "Oh yeah, bring it in here," you know. And it was all these cabs, these crashed out cabs that they were fixing and washing and stuff. And uh, we were just, it was hilarious. Uh, um, and we charged up for about an hour. Everybody wanted to know about it. Everybody kept walking over, checking it out. They were so nice. It was great. Wait, so we were the, it's so weird because we Lincoln Tunnel. What? How much did you, were you able to charge in one hour? I we just did enough that I thought we could get through the Lincoln Tunnel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so it, it has a, a tiny battery, right? It's a small battery, isn't that? I mean, it's lead acid, 15 right? Fifteen kilowatt. Oh, I guess it's not that tiny. Okay. So you're saying, and what kind of a charger? How fast of a charge? Like how fast That's is a charge? Question. That's a good question. I don't know what. You remember? I don't know what charger we have in there. That's a good question. It's been that it's long. It's a one ten. So, so here's the thing. At 110, you can't do more than one and a half kilowatts, right? 1500 watts. That's max. Wow. Any plug that's can good. give you. All right. So that's so, that's 12 amps or whatever I think on a 15 yeah, amp circuit. That's true. You're right. Yeah. So, so how much do you think we put in? I mean, so let's see. I, how much? No more than one and a half kilowatt. Wow. That's like nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> Oh my God! I guess it's just good enough to get past the tunnel. You could have stayed. You could have gotten stuck in the tunnel. <laughs> oh my God! You know, if you get stuck in that tunnel, it's like they call the national guard. It's a serious thing. I was like, I'm not getting stuck in that tunnel. No way. That means you weren't completely dead. So you still had power, right? I mean, yeah, I was just worried about it. You know, like because yeah. when, when when you floor it. It was starting to kind of, uh, you know, there wasn't much power left. And I was like, uh, you know, I mean, people used to say to me like, oh, that thing's not going to last that long. I'm like, yeah, because it's built with lead acid batteries that we bought in 2008. Like yeah. now, if you put a, a full, you know, pack in there, oh, my God. Yeah. You could go 200 miles probably. Yeah. It's still running? That car still still... Yeah, it still runs. The problem now is that the 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 brakes are shot so oh. bad that the um, uh, the wheel cylinders on the drum brakes in the back let go. So now, when you press the pedal, it goes to the floor, and all your liquid goes out on the floor. So, oh, I see, see, see. So that has to get rebuilt. That's that's normal yeah. old car stuff. This car is from 1990. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so it just needs, you know, mechanical yeah. work. And then the batteries, one of the batteries, you know, shit the bed, it's done. So now we're on 11. Oh, I see, so you just removed it? <laughs> yeah, I just took it out of the line. <laughs> but now it's yeah, going to get overcharged. Oh, but that's okay because it's lead acid. You get overcharged. Oh, right, yeah, well, they'll start the boil or whatever, you know. Yeah. And, you know, these batteries, like, we've rebuilt them and stuff, like, we they cracked and leaked out all their fluid and then we resealed it and then re put acid in oh wow it's you know that's crazy yeah and well now i look back and i'm like oh my god and there's no regenerative this, and, but the, you know what though the controller never broke and but that but what's interesting though is that that setup is a DC setup with the Curtis, I forget what they call it, a 1270 something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, uh, a lot of people have trouble with them. Like you can, over, first of all, you can over rev, you can over rev it. Yeah. There's no protection from that. Okay. okay. And you can also kill the controller. So I've seen both. Uh, Tom from Battery Hookup, yeah. He overrun of that motor. Not him, but the previous owner. Previous owner, yeah. Did I tell you what I spoke with Net Gain Motors? Did I tell you what they <laughs> what did what they, they say? Said? No, what did they say? Right. Okay, so cuz the the shaft that goes to the coupler ripped off. Yeah, and that's like an inch and a quarter, inch and a half or something, right? Like some crazy amount inch of steel. Of, of hardened eight. steel. So I asked them, I said, "What would it take?" to rip that shaft clean off. 
and the guy did the calculation, he said 11,000 foot pounds. <laughs> there you go. Something went yeah. wrong in that car. Yeah, they over revved it. That's what happened. It must have been a, an epic, uh, you know, uh, tire spun or something, you know? Yeah, who tire. knows? A donut. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I think what, I think what happened was they over revved it, and then the motor grenaded itself, and then locked. Then locked. Then the shaft had the oh, flywheel, the flywheel. Which keep going, and yeah. then ripped off the thing. That would make sense. Yeah. 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 So that motor was toast, right? That thing was just gone, like the whole thing. Oh yeah, I have it here. I was. What I want to do is take the permanent magnets out, and then. Um, it doesn't have permanent magnets. It, it's, it's, like, it's all sealed together. Like It doesn't want to move. Uh, it know? doesn't have permanent magnets. It's just uh, field wound. Oh. Yeah, it's a oh, series, okay. right? It's Wait, a series see. one, DC motor, yeah. Oh, it's not a permanent magnet? Okay. No. Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, you should you should be able to take that apart. And, I mean, other than the mechanical mass that it's inside there, I guess. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's destroyed, but... It'd be cool to save it. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, listen. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll figure it out so that we can get you out of here, uh, and then we can we can orchestrate this thing where we can have people come over and pay us money <laughs> to help us build a car. But they'll go from you know beginning to end. And they'll they'll know how to install one of these little systems, right? Uh, these systems are reliable. They're available. They're cheap now. Uh, sometimes yeah. you can pick them up for eighteen hundred bucks if you are if lucky enough to to be. And I think that's going to become more and more uh, common thing because so many people are converting them and they're buying them. And sometimes people chew more than they can they can or bite more than they can chew, right? And then. They just yeah, the big, give up. the big common thing is that people want to, you're like, they're like, oh, I want to do a Range Rover. And I'm like, chill. It's a big car. Do a, do a small car first. It's a big car. And then the other thing is that sometimes they do, people will convert a car that they don't really like. They're just like, oh, it's a cheap one that I have laying around here. And you're like, okay, you're going to dump all that money in a car that you're not going to want to drive in five years. Well, that's not a smart yep. thing. But then, then that benefits someone else because then they're like, I don't, I get rid of this thing. I, it's, it's an ugly car. I don't care about it, you know? And then, then you can buy it for 1800 bucks, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Like the Fiero is a love hate car. There's some people that love it, but mm -hmm. most people hate it. So it's not worth anything, Yeah. you know? And then that's why, and then you get all this equipment and all the hard work is done. I just had to diagnose a couple of things that, public charging is not working yet i'll get that working and uh and then yeah. i'll probably turn around because i don't love it either i think it's cool it's interesting yeah but yeah i'll probably turn that around and sell it at a reasonable price someone will benefit you know yeah it work yeah and then, but yeah like and you know what the cool thing about a class like this is that um i'm st i still am friends with the people that taught in that and and were students in that class originally 2008 yeah. That's a long time and ago, that, and you still keep in contact with them, huh? Yeah, and then one, of, you know, a couple of them uh, ended up working. Actually, I think Roselli was originally. Oh yeah. Uh, he knew Mr. Q, and and Mr. Q's still around, but he lives close to um, Balboa Park. He's like the nicest guy ever, you know. He's still and, around. Uh, Maybe we can get him for the podcast here, and we can interview him. And dude, you know, here's the problem. He, he oh, here's another him. one that we have to get, uh, just so that Brian sees. Uh, we have to try and get Alan Cacconi. He's here in San Dimas. Uh, Wait, who's that? Alan Cacconi is the guy that started AC Propulsion, which sold... Oh, that would be amazing. Let's do that. Yeah. He sold the yeah. uh, technology to Elon Musk to start Tesla, right? We'd love to know the story. We'd yeah. You know who probably uh, knows a little bit about him? There's been some, there's a guy, I don't know, I think they're in, maybe in Texas, I'm not sure. It's called Gruber Motors. Have you heard of them? Gruber Motors? They service roadsters. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen the video. Yeah, 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 I've seen the video. That should be pretty good. And that guy had an original AC propulsion um, 
car in his collection and it, it got killed in a fire but oh. he knows all about ac propulsion yes that would be go. a cool because he kind of has you know that's the thing that i feel like is missing and i'm glad we're doing this thing where we're talking about it is yeah what's missing is that where did all this start you know yeah like you know you and i've been messing around with this for like a decade but like before that there were some people that did it before us and like we don't even they don't get any credit and we don't, don't hear about them at all and i'm like they're still alive you could you could talk to them you know like mr q he ran these classes and then you like ac propulsion like he was a pioneer been? yeah like that's crazy that's a long time ago yeah and then you know do you know uh michael brown who wrote the original book on how to convert your car? No, I don't know. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not, a, I'm not a book guy. Remember, I, uh, I learn by doing. No, I, I'm with you. I know. By watching it's examples. Good. By learn by doing books. Wait, <laughs> if you got two seconds, I gotta get this thing. Hold on, hold on. Yes. Yeah. Did you hear that, Brian? About Alan Kakoni? That's what I was. Yeah, because that that dude is here in San Dimas. And and yeah, that dude is literally the guy that started electric cars. He sold that technology to Tesla and became AC propulsion. AC propulsion, yeah. And it became. I mean, Tesla ended up not using their technology or whatever, but you know, it served to 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 spark, you know, the idea. And you never hear about. It. Yeah. I mean, on, unless you're, you know, like a hard, you know, hardcore like EV guy or whatever, then you don't, you never know. It's just you studied EV, EV history. Yeah. AP EV history. <laughs> yes, it doesn't exist. <laughs> that class in uh, the local colleges, it doesn't exist yet. But one day it might, and then his name is gonna go down in history. But here's the I other thing. It is. Yeah. But I don't know where it is, but there was a book called uh, How to Convert Your Car, and it was, like, made by a race car driver, and, uh, you know, it was so simple, like, and it was very encouraging, and he used to do the rabbits, and then it's called Electromotive. I, they're still around, but I, they don't answer the phone. Oh, I see. So they might be retired or whatever. Yeah, but, a lot of these guys are, you know? You could only do yeah, this for so long. Yeah, that was a while ago. And then Canadian Electric was taken over by another guy but before that they were in business for like 30 40 years wow really yeah this is a thing and uh there's a yeah. lot of history yeah there's definitely it's a lot of, you know I, I don't know if you know that whole thing about the 1978 79 race between mit and um and cal state or cal caltech and they they build electric cars, and they raced towards each other's, uh, you know, uh, campus. Oh, campus. Yeah, and it was a race, right? And this is 1978, dude. Wow. With electric cars. Uh, yeah. The, uh, yeah, the, the cool. California people did a BW bus, a 58, pretty much no. like mine. And then the, the the MIT guys did a uh, Corvair. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Who won? The California guys, the, the, the BW bus, obviously, by Works. about half hour. Works. Half hour, yeah, the Corvair uh, had too many uh, stretches where they had to tow it or something. And by the way, they were using crazy, like, technology at that time they were ah, using some no sulfur battery some metal sulfur thing on the bw bus had to be cool with like ice they had these boxes in there and they had to stop at a liquor store on the way and load it up with ice ah. and they were pulling off uh on the side of the road where there was like you know like power stations and they they worked out a deal to try to like from from the you know the utility companies and they would plug in these big giant things to charge <laughs> it was really crazy and That's the, so cool. it would be a cool story right but except all we know is some article in wow. in one probably like a college newspaper or something right but that's all 
that is known. I'm like, come on, like we, we should be able to find these people and you interview them and you know maybe dig up some old pictures the original pictures because the pictures that we have are like black and white <laughs> right and there's like a photocopy quality to them and i'm like come on someone's got some better thing right some better pictures and the stories and whatever you know like it would be a cool thing to not let forget you know this thing that's so cool you know there's an uh, um one more detail would be uh did you ever hear about the race down in Australia? It was a solar car race, and the the car, the GM car, looked like a cockroach, <laughs> but had um, it was panels? like a white cockroach with solar panels, so blue in the back. Yeah. And, but so that was called the Sun Racer. Now the people that built that is a company. I think they call it Aero. I don't know Aero Tech or something like that. That's the same people that did the the EV1. Oh, there you go. And they're in California, and now they build, like, military drones. Oh, there we go. They went the dark side. Yeah, yeah they went the dark side. <laughs> they made a good thing, and then they're like, yeah. yeah. Too but, much the, but the point of the thing is that, like, it's all connected. That's the beauty of the electric car community is that yeah. because of my interest in electric cars, I got to meet you, and... You know, because of you, I got to meet some other people and stuff, and it's just such a cool thing. Like, we're just trying to, we're like car nerds that like the environment. <laughs> you know, it's like, I wasn't even a car guy. I didn't, I mean, I kind of wanted a car. I guess I like car. Now I, I, car now I like yeah. cars. Now I have four or five out here, right? Like, who needs that many cars? Then nobody needs that, unless you're a yeah. car guy. I apparently am. And I have a garage now that could fit like five cars, so I guess I'm a car guy now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know any non-car guys that have a lift. With, yes, uh, Volkswagen. exactly. Uh, entrenched um, like hardcore Volkswagen. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I turn I into a car, a car guy. guy. Yeah, you're a car guy. <laughs> I didn't start this this way though. I'm morphing into it. This is the evolution yeah. happening before your eyes. Yeah. That's funny. All right, Look, man. You're just, uh, you're just, a, you know, you you like the thing. You know, it's a fun thing to do. It's helpful. People enjoy it. So that's a, it's a great, it's a great genre. It's a great place to be. Yeah. Feel like people used to say, like, you're like, oh, aren't you upset with the, uh, you know, how the environment's going? I'm like, well, to be honest, it kind of gives me something to do. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know. If I'm fix if I'm contributing towards teaching people and making clean cars, well, I'm kind of I'm busy, you know. Like, yeah. What if it was all perfect? I mean, not everything's perfect. That's why it would be boring. That's what makes the world go round, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't want a perfect world. Watch, yeah. watch the Matrix. They told yeah. you there. Yeah, exactly. Right. All right. So hey, listen. Let's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah let's get together, and let's keep talking and let's keep planning because eventually. We're gonna be able to do this, and we'll bring you out of here. And we'll convert some cars. We'll record some videos. We'll teach some people. We'll empower them with the knowledge, right, of of being able to build their own cars so that they can go somewhere else and you know and build cars for themselves and other people. I don't know. Who knows? But there's quite they a bit of people. It. They they can do it. We'll help them. We'll yeah, help them. I would love to help them. Absolutely, okay. it'll be fun. All right, let's do it. Uh, thank you for joining me and this second episode of my podcast. We'll have you again. All right. Well, uh, All right. yeah, we're still in contact, so we can have you again. Uh, Sounds great. In the future. Sounds great. All right, Jay. Who, oh yeah, that. you want to plug in your uh, yeah. your socials? Your yeah, socials. sure. Yeah. So um, I, I'm uh, Mr. G's Workshop on Instagram. Okay. But I got a YouTube channel that's starting to grow a little bit. Um, there you go, and you're going to give up a battery. What's that? You're going to give. A, you're going to do a battery giveaway. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, how do we do it? I've never done a giveaway. It's kind of weird. You just you just say, "Hey, who wants to win this battery?" And then you just have to tell them to comment uh, oh. and like that video, because then what happens is that people like and they comment. And then YouTube says, oh, this is a good video. 
So then they promote it, and then they get more people to watch it, and then more people. And how do you choose, how do you choose the winner? Like randomly, or just? So yeah, there's a like a there's a few apps, there's a few like services online that you can go and then just randomly choose a winner. But here's the thing, I'm still learning. Yeah. You have to specify that only within the 48 lower 48 states because you can't ship that battery right. to Puerto Rico, Hawaii. Virgin Islands or any other other country. It's a, it's a right. nightmare trying to ship it, right? So uh, you just say like anyone can enter, anyone can comment, right? But if 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 you live outside of the United States, you're just automatically disqualified, and we'll just jump to the next guy, you know? Uh, All right, that's fair. And yeah. what we'll make the comment. So they gotta like and uh, should they like the um, like the Instagram video or the YouTube. YouTube, right? I'd say to do the YouTube, yeah, and then... Uh, All right, like, share, like, comment, and uh, subscribe, and you yes. got to comment and say, Ammo Pack. Yeah. Yes. Jehu, Jag 35 Ammo Pack. No, let them... Now, I'd say let them, uh, let them comment whatever they want, because then you're going to be choosing between a bunch of comments that are the same, and it's going to be harder to be like, oh, who commented oh, okay. what, you know? All right, best comment wins. Yeah, there you go. Best comment wins, because then... Best comment wins. What do you think about this pack? Yes. And uh, let's open it up a little. 48 volts, right? Oh. And we're going to be able to see that working, right? Yeah, it's on the uh, it's on the lawnmower and... Is it on the lawnmower? Oh, it's on the riding mower. That's on the riding so mower. So maybe a couple weeks. Okay, uh, all right. Right now, they're up to episode three. I would assume that this is in episode five or six. Okay. So maybe okay. two two or three more weeks. Damn. But that's on their channel. That's on the Now You Know channel. That's on the Now You Know but channel. But on my channel, I will have a behind the scenes how I made this. I welded this and I did the piston delete. I also had to make a, my friend and I made a, a custom coupler. Uh, mm. So we could get a certain motor to work. So there's a lot of behind the scenes, and uh, actually, I show how the engine works too. Mm. Uh, four stroke process, you know, three input air fuel spark. Just so, just to give some background. I mean, I'm you know, if you're into this, this stuff, you got to know all the things on how it works. You know, yeah. You work with a running car. Oh yeah. There you go. All right. So people, go check out Ron at his channels. And yeah. So my channel is Ron. Grossinger, one S G R O S I N G E R. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we'll we'll put some links on the. Uh, <laughs> we'll put some links on the uh, description of this sure. video, right? All right, sure, man. Cool. Thank okay. you for joining me. We'll do this again in the future. All right. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much. All right. We'll see you later. All right, Jay. We'll talk to you soon. Thing. all right okay all right let me introduce you this is my maestro this is mr q abram coveto and he ricochet and this is ricochet which is super important okay <laughs> and he taught me about electric cars this is an electric car with the plug and he taught me the electric cars Back in 2009, no, 2008, 2008, I took a class with Mr. Q on how to convert a car from gasoline to electric. 